Hey, what's up YouTube? Chris Gardner here. Today I'm going to show you something that um, is pretty important to real estate and architectural photography and that is making sure you've got correct verticals. First we're going to identify them, then we're going to go over a few different methods of how you can correct them and using various different software. Uh, we're going to start off in Lightroom first because it's probably the easiest. But we'll, we'll show you in Photoshop and even some other free photo manipulation software that you might have access to if you're not part of the Adobe ecosystem. So we're going to use this one as an example. Um, you know, it's not terrible, but you can see that these, these lines here are not uh, straight up and down. So let's go into develop mode. Firstly, how could you identify when you do have uh, verticals that need to be fixed? If you turn on this loop overlay uh, with the grid, it becomes much more apparent, you know, how much slant and lean you have going on here. Um, but there's other ways if, you know, you don't want to turn that on all the time. Sometimes it uh, gets in the way, clogs up the view. So easiest of them all is just going auto. Now this one didn't do a terrible job. Let's just see how we're looking. You know, it's still ever so slightly off. As we can tell, let's say this line, we've got a tiny bit of the um, beams showing and we're, we're right up against this here uh, over that span. So we know that that's not perfect. Uh, this one, you know, pretty darn close. This one, fairly close, you know, sufficient, I would say for most real estate purposes. But what about when it's not? Um, the other way to do it uh, next easiest is probably guided mode and that lets us draw anywhere from two to th two to four lines to get it straightened up. So I usually like to pick ones that are on equal and opposing sides of the frame uh, because sometimes if let's say you're doing two on one side of the frame it won't take in all the information properly. So we should have this vertically corrected now but it's probably still not horizontally and when I'm picking let's say in the case of I'm going to show you with just three lines here uh, I try and pick one close to the middle and there we go that is even likely a better version than the auto uh, it takes a little more time but not that much and you know vertical obviously will do the same thing but I can tell even without the grid that we have a little bit of lean there have a little bit of lean there and it's a little harder to tell but I don't think that these horizontals are perfect and full corrects for the horizontals now let's see how perfect that one is and so there we go we got a tiny bit of lean here still ever so slightly right there but more or less uh, definitely sufficient and occasionally in the case where let's say the construction of the property is not perfectly level which you know you'll most often find on decks or or things like that um, or if there's let's say a fridge in the frame that is is made to sit with a little bit of a lean uh, using your auto guided and vertical and full will occasionally be fooled by those um, lines that it'll pick up off it. So how can we do this manually in Lightroom? Let's take a look. Uh, let's turn off this loop overlay first. Okay. Because the reason is I like when you hover over these you get its own loop come up and um, one of the things that I like to do is make sure that these are the same size because this top arrow dead center here and the first one I always change is rotation because your center line should be perfectly rotated first before you bother trying to do anything else so I'm gonna use center line lined up with maybe one of these small um, right here and I just use the arrow keys to get some pretty fine adjustment then we go to vertical and looking at the same time on both sides of the frame so, you know, I've got this one here, almost there. And there we go, I think that's pretty darn close. And now let's take a look at some horizontals. So we've got this one, looks to be sloping downward. Uh, this one ever so slightly sloping downward. So let's use some horizontal. And then a constrained crop that I'll just get rid of, you know, bring it in tight enough that we have no white 
corners. And there we go, that one is fairly sufficient as well. So let's leave that and we're gonna check it out next in Photoshop. That pretty much covers the four main ways you can do it in Lightroom. All right, here we are working in Photoshop. I'm just going with the JPEG for this because um, you know I just want the raw image. So first thing I usually do, and you don't really have to do this, I duplicate the layer. Let me go transform and we can see this is our center point, but what I usually do is draw some guides in, at least for the center point so I can get that perfect uh, rotation. And then I will try to also put some guides close to the horizontals or verticals I want to use. All right, so let's go here. Now we're going to go Control T or Command T, whichever. And we really, well, we'll use Rotate first. But the important thing is that we don't apply these transformations until we're all done because you won't get things working quite right. So let's get these, uh, this center one together. And zoomed out like this, it's a little harder to see. It's kind of aliasing these lines here. Not sure if you can see that in the recording. Now let's bring in the bottom and let's bring in this side here. All right, now let's turn that off, see how it looks now. This is a slightly different result than what Lightroom has given us. It looks like just judging by, you know, the space on the out ed edges of the frame. And now what we can do is just take our box select tool and let's go in to the corners, image, crop, and there we go. That's pretty darn close. I can see I'm a tiny bit off here still, but uh, that was a pretty quick adjustment we've just made. Overall, an improvement from the original. Finally, we will do this in some of the free software options you may have access to if let's say you're not using Photoshop or Lightroom. Let's do it in GIMP, which is totally free, basically an alternative to Photoshop. And we'll also look at either Darktable or Raw Therapy. I'm not sure which one we'll, we'll move on to next. So we're just gonna hop over there onto a different computer. All right, so we've got our picture loaded up here in GIMP. This is a free software. I'm using it in Linux, uh, but it's available for all platforms. And similar to how we've done in Photoshop, we are going to drag in some guides. Now, the thing I like about Photoshop is these guides kind of snap to the middle, so it's easy to get them there. And I'm just going to skip that part and we're going to go dropping some guides on some of the horizontal and the vertical lines we want to check against. And the way I place them is I look for something that's close, you know, a line that's close to the middle, and then I make sure that that guide is, is touching or very close to uh, that line in the middle of frame and similarly for a vertical line. All right, now all we have to do with our guides placed, oh, let's drop maybe even one more down here. Although it's a deck, sometimes unreliable. Uh, right click, tools, transform tools, 3D transform. Now X, Y, and Z, uh, you know, vertical, horizontal, and rotation. So the only thing I don't like about uh, this so much is that it's a little harder to get fine adjustments here. So I'm holding down the shift key right now and it's letting me drag it. And let's see, that already looks like it's pretty close. Let's see, we have a middle line and those are looking pretty good. I think I'm going to leave that. Oh, and you know what? In this one, we can actually identify the middle because of these beams. This is the one that's the thinnest, so I must be right in the middle of this one. It's kind of pointing straight towards me. Um, so there, I, I'd like that rotation. I'm going to use that. Then I'm going to go with, I tend to do vertical first just because it's the more important of the two. You know, horizontal is more important when it's a one point perspective photo, which I've, I've chosen one in this case that was intended to be one point perspective. So we're almost there. Now I'm seeing a little bit of a misalignment here. Sometimes that could be chalked up to the fact that the rotation isn't quite perfect. Oh, I'm going too far in the wrong direction there. There we go. And let's see, you know, our horizontals are already looking pretty good. 
but we do have this slightly sloping down. I remember from doing it in Lightroom that it was also slightly sloping down on this side too. It could be a factor of the deck, but let's give it like that. And then we're gonna hit transform. Um, if you don't hit this, it's just gonna undo all the stuff you've done. All right, and now we just wanna trim off this excess here. So I've gotten my box select tool, image, crop to selection, and there we go. We'd be ready to save or bring it back into, you know, whatever other editing software you're using. So that is GIMP. Let's uh, scratch this one now and try out one more software that's also free. And it's a little bit more like Lightroom. If this one's like Photoshop, the other one's a little more uh, closely resembling Lightroom's workflow. So we're gonna discard changes. All right, so we've got the same photo loaded up here. This is raw therapy. And we are going to look for Transform Lens Geometry over here. Uh, this is a module. If you don't have it loaded up, uh, there's a way to load in your different modules here. And this one does have a little bit of finer control. So we can even select a straight line. Let's just try this out, right? Now the one thing we would like to have that really makes this job easy is getting those overlays on. Now we don't have the overlays, which really does make our job easy, but sometimes you can fake it by just dragging it up to an edge here, using that as an overlay. Now let's just check some of these verticals. That one's pretty darn close. This one, not so good. And there we go. This one actually appears to have cropped a little bit more off than the others, um, which we don't seem to have a whole lot of control with. But regardless, there we go. We have got it straightened up and that is one, two, three, four different softwares we've tried and a bunch of different processes. All right, one more thing in here. I thought I would just make a quick update. Originally, I mentioned that it's automatically cropping for me and I couldn't get guides Well, I did some more playing. Obviously, I don't use this software a whole lot, but I'm fairly familiar with it. Uh, we would go autofill and now we get the full picture and if we want to get some guides in, we can just go turn the crop module on and just go to grid or, you know, whichever one you want to work with. But this makes it a lot easier uh, to see what you're doing. And then from there, we could select a bounding box and that would be our new crop for when we export. Okay, one last item. Let's just go through and quickly go over how you should not approach this. Uh, so we're back in Photoshop again. We're just going to scratch these guides, get those out of our way. And I can tell when, when a photographer has used this method because it becomes pretty obvious. So let's duplicate that layer and we're going to go transform command T and basically using anything other than pers perspective is going to get you some really weird results. So, you know, this is one of the most obvious ones is when people have used distort uh, to kind of straighten their verticals. It just absolutely does not look right. It doesn't move right. You'll just end up fiddling with these little handles so much, it's going to be really hard to get a realistic looking result. Now I kind of knew from doing this one a couple different times how these points should move so this may not even look terrible but um, I definitely would not recommend this it's really easy to get it wrong you know especially when you start uh, skewing in certain directions there's no good reason to use this method for sure and just in case you're curious this is my blog here 2014 it actually was how to fix parallax errors if you want to check it out it goes over basically the same amount of information focused in Lightroom and it'll just kind of show you some of the, um, you know, illustrate some of the points that we talked about here and how to fix it. So that's from a long while ago, but mostly still relevant today. So hopefully you found that hope helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm working on getting some more videos coming to you all to do with, uh, you know, real estate, especially uh, property, photography, architectural, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, that's what I do on the daily. Uh, if you enjoyed watching this video, thanks for checking it out. Maybe leave a comment. Uh, if you think I left something out, let me know. I'll be happy to make some corrections or a new update for it. And we'll catch you on the next one.